Hey, what's going on tech fans? Welcome back to Tech of Tomorrow. I'm here with Buddy the Impatient Dog and today is launch day of the brand new AMD R9 290X. Now, the sample that we're getting is non-reference and won't be here for about a week or so, but we were lucky enough to hook up with our bro Linus who's actually gonna bring the coverage for us. So, for all you folks out there right off the bat, I want you guys to hit that like button and show Linus how much you appreciate him bringing that technology over here to Tech of Tomorrow so we could bring you stuff on launch day. Linus Pro, thank you very much, man. Appreciate it very much. And with that said, let's bounce over to Canada and see what Linus has for us on the new R9 290X. Thank you for the invitation to do the guest review. I appreciate it very much. We were lucky enough to get one of AMD's Radeon R9 290X cards, and I would be more than happy to tell you a little bit about it. So number one is it uses the same GCN architecture as the last generation 7000 series, but there have been some tweaks, some improvements, some new features, and just generally some beefing upness of that last gen architecture to make it a truly next gen performance card. So for one thing, that one gigahertz processor in there has over six billion transistors with 2,816 stream processors. It now features a four gig memory frame buffer and a 512 bit bus. This is important particularly in the future when we want to be playing games at greater than HD resolution such as 2.5K or even 4K. In fact, the 290X really stretches its legs when you're gaming at 4K or an AMD Affinity technology which is surround 1080p monitors for the most part. Although you can do surround 4K and I did see that with two cards running at their conference and it was pretty freaking amazing. Now they've made changes other than that. Number one is it has DirectX 11.2 to support, but nobody is talking about that, so let's just move right along. Number two is support for AMD's Mantle API. So this is a new way that game developers can program their game to, instead of communicating with the card through an intermediary, such as DirectX or OpenGL, it can communicate directly to the card in a way that wasn't previously possible. So when Battlefield 4 comes out very shortly in its retail form, we're going to be looking at probably AMD and NVIDIA neck and neck because they're going to be under the same constraints and that is dealing with DirectX. In December, when Battlefield 4 becomes the first game to officially support Mantle, we could be looking at a whole new world of performance, not only for this card, the 290X, but also even for AMD's last generation 7000 series products because it is supported on any card running with a GCN architecture chip inside it. But there's more guys. The chip's clocked at up to one gigahertz. What exactly does that mean? Well, their new power tune technology allows maximums to be set for pretty much anything and then handles the actual fluctuations on its own. So you can set a maximum power consumption, a maximum temperature, a maximum clock speed, and then voltage is actually going to be dynamically adjusted in order to keep all of those other things under control and optimize the card for as much performance as possible. AMD's quoting changes in voltage as as granular as once every 10 microseconds. Yes, an extremely, extremely small amount of time in order to leverage the available power that the card can consume. Now with that said, yes, the card does consume more power than GTX 780 and GTX Titan, but it also performs extremely well. It's also a little bit on the louder side, but with the switch on the top, you can decide whether you want the fan to run in quiet mode, which maxes out at 40% fan speed, or Uber mode, which maxes out at 50 55% fan speed. More improvements guys, easy iFinity now. Gone are the days of DisplayPort adapters in order to get iFinity running at all. You can hook a monitor up to any of the four outputs at the back and you are ready to go. You can also run up to six displays off of a single card using a DisplayPort hub and they no longer need to design an iFinity 6 edition in order to enable that use case. Next up we've got True Audio which right now, okay there aren't a ton of games supporting it, but in the future could be a big deal. It's a programmable DSP, so that is a digital sound processor on the card itself that will allow games to directly tap into resources that they never would have had before and they would have had to rely on the CPU because ever since Microsoft changed things around with Windows Vista and we weren't able to use hardware accelerated sound cards anymore, we've been stuck 
pretty much in the dark ages as far as hardware accelerated audio goes. So I really hope that this is something that takes off, but right now it's only supported on the 290X, the upcoming 290, and the 260X. Now, with respect to overclocking and the way that PowerTune works, we didn't get a very good overclocker. I've had people commenting on, on my review saying, well, Linus, you've only got it clocked at this, and other reviewers got that. You know what? Overclocking is a bit of a mixed bag. I think we're not going to get the true performance story of this card until we see non-reference designs with better power solutions and with better coolers on them. That's when we will really see what Radeon R9 290X is capable of. So bear that in mind when you're looking at our overclocks. We have a decent overclocking GTX 780 and we overclock all of the cards in our benchmarks. Our 290X isn't a great overclocker, but what we can say about it is that it is $100 less expensive than the card that you're about to see it real close to on all the following charts. So without further ado, let's rock out to benchmark music in the typical Tech of Tomorrow style. Someone's coming, and I guess you guys are back anyway, so uh, that, that was a little awkward. All right, you guys looked at the numbers. You saw them. Price to performance, clear winner against the GTX 780, although we've yet to see what NVIDIA is going to do with the 780 Ti. Next thing up is performance-wise, remember, we overclock all the cards. This one's a bit of a bunk overclocker, and our 780 is an okay overclocker. So, if we factor in that other reviewers around the web were getting upwards of 1.1 gigahertz on this card, we can say with confidence that it should be performing, particularly at higher resolutions, and it does really stretch its leg as you amp up resolution. It performs at least on par, or maybe better than the GTX 780. And that is without factoring in AMD Mantle technology yet. So, in short, it's up to you what you guys think, but it looks to me like AMD has a winner on their hands if you're looking for a very high-end gaming solution with a great price-to-performance ratio. Thanks again for having me as a guest on Tech of Tomorrow. I hope that I didn't bore you guys. And without further ado, back to Elric. So wasn't that awesome news directly from Linus Tech Tips in Canada? So right off the bat, once again, a high salute to him and the team over there. Make sure you guys sub to Linus Tech Tips for bringing this coverage over to us. And probably the next time you see me and Linus together, we're going to be giving away a giant, amazing system. So with that said, I'm going to go out and actually read some reviews and see what's all up with this so I can actually form my own opinions in time for when I get my cards here at the house. So with that said, peace out. Thank you, Linus. We love you, brother. So much appreciation for that. Fans, make sure you do the right thing. Hit the like button here and go sub to Linus Tech Tips. And if you love us, hey, you're not subbed, hit that subscription button that you can see upside there behind my head. I'm out of here.